everybody, it's Carolyn. Nice to talk to you again today. So Jennifer and I again have another video where we had a conversation about the body during these ascension times. But it's not just the kinds of things that I think maybe we're all used to talking about, but we're going to get into some detail regarding self-healing. But here are the topics we're going to cover with respect to the body during ascension and during these awakening times. We're gonna talk about programming mm -hmm, with plasma. So you're gonna to wanna to listen to this, it's very interesting. Um, and we lead up to it by talking about some of our examples. We also are going to talk about the fragility of our human body and why it's fragile right now or at certain times during this ascension journey. We're gonna also talk about crossing timelines with parts of those timelines of who we are in those timelines and how that is affecting the body. We touch on that as well. We also are going to discuss intentional healing of the body. And again, this is anything you have that potentially has been an issue for you over time. And we talk about kind of where to start. We give some examples. We give some ideas on, on how to be Become your own healer because we all have that opportunity to do this. So we're recovering a lot of ground today. We're talking kind of galactic kinds of body situations, um, talking about, like I said, with the whole plasma idea, very etheric. Um, also talking about how you can actually go ahead and program um, your body. So I hope you'll join us today and get something out of it for your own journey. And like I've always said, Hopefully you'll take a couple things away for your own journey, for the puzzle of your life, a couple puzzle pieces that will help you forward. And like we say, if it, the rest doesn't resonate, then you just toss it aside. So it's Jennifer and myself again today. I hope you enjoy it. Also, one other thing, um, some of you have asked for her information where she might post um, some of her details. We've now included a link inside the description box below where you'll see that so you can connect in with her as well if you'd like to. So again, thank you so much for joining me today. I'm Carolyn. I'm a channel. I'm a distance energy healer and I'm a spiritual awakening mentor and I offer these channeled messages either from the light keepers who are the group of angelic beings who do a lot of the channels with me or with Jennifer and myself where we channel information and we provide it to you and we typically speak from more a larger galactic perspective galactic conversations we've called if you're new to my channel thank you so much for joining me today for those of you who are always here it's just really wonderful to see your comments and to see you come back over and over again so thank you so much for joining me please like share and subscribe it helps me be able to reach other people who may find these messages useful for themselves on their awakening and ascension journey. So below in the description box, you're also going to find a link to a video on how to create flow in your body for health and wellness. I offer that video to you, but what it does, it actually takes you to my email list where you can sign up for it. I send out one email a week on a Friday, but it's a poetic message for the week to come to support you forward. And it's a message from the Light Keepers, the group of angelic beings that I channel. So I think you'll enjoy it. So that's more free content that you can get there. So one other thing coming out of this video is I think Jennifer and I are going to look to potentially do a live event where we actually do some healing work. Um, we will do very likely collective healing work, um, but we will also potentially take individual healing requests. So we haven't quite formed that up. I need to kind of take a look at the technical aspects of doing a live Zoom on YouTube um, and or Facebook, but needless to say, we're pretty sure we're gonna do this. And this video has actually led us to want to um, Kind of present that for you so um, hopefully you'll be interested in joining us there at some point in time uh, what we'll try to do is let you know when that live is going to be so that you can schedule it on your calendar if you'd like to join us as well so again a healing event that we are going to have for the collective as well as very likely individuals and we'll be doing work together again both of us we just kind of fly by the seat of our pants we just do what we know to do we both work uh, I don't want to say very differently but but it, it is, we both have unique ways of doing healing work. So we're gonna combine this into one session and see what happens for you. So hopefully you'll be able to join us there too and we'll keep you posted on that. So enjoy the video and I'll catch up with you at the end. It's a really, ama it's a really kind of interesting time because so much is happening with the body. Now we've talked about the body before being like, oh, sometimes it's, you know, we're gonna have this amazing, kind of plasmic, super, you know, super uh, amazing modern uh, 
And then they've also said times where we're feeling kind of this old jalopy body, right? I just heard uh, fragile, fragile times. This is interesting. We may start answering some questions here. Fragile, good. like, okay, I'm just going to quickly add this because I just got like, okay. So when we're in a stage, which may lead to what's going on with me, right? When we're in, when I woke up with that knee injury, it was overnight. Like I woke up with it. I wasn't that way the day before. And they're talking about the ascension journey with the body being fragile times. And oh gosh. Okay. So this is one of the reasons they oftentimes will want us to slow down. Those of us who are very active are, I think there are going to be other people out here who are going to understand this. I wonder if that's what happened with me and I didn't well, listen. You know, we've been talking about this too. Like we go to bed and we sleep like normal. We wake up with all these injuries like we've had. So I'm not, I, I think that there's, there's something happening that is a, um, either a resolution to, or a gathering of facets Yes. or something that's going where we're pulling back maybe stuff um, where the bodies are are the more of a diminished version of a body like it's not the yes. um, sort yes. of body it's it's a of a body that maybe got fiddled with at some point or throughout history that was diminished in some way you know these types of things okay let me add this so what they're talking about when you just said that is Oh my God. They said, you're picking up bodies across different timelines because we're doing the, Oh God, I have chills. We're redoing the regrouping and the fragment, um, uh, not retention. What am I trying to say? Bringing back our, in our fragments, bringing back in our past lives. And therefore the body is shifting and changing. And, and therefore they're talking about can be fragile at times. And, but they're showing like the timelines crossing is so the body has to make this yes. because you've got this, make this adjustment. Does that make sense to you? It does make sense to me. It's exactly what I'm experiencing. So when I, when I text you earlier, I said, I, I had this kind of thing come over me yesterday because I, when I float through, I float through different bodies and there's some bodies that are, excuse my language, they're badass bodies. There's nothing can hurt this body. And then I'm in other bodies where, you know, like radiation, my hair, this, or, you know, so my hair is, you know, fall like fragile and falling because I was exposed to something and I'm like my the bot some of the bodies that I've been in that wouldn't have phased it right so I'm telling my team I said now wait a minute we need to get better organized here because as I'm going through these what should be happening is I should be carrying my highest blueprint with me through all of them and as I come into contact or interface with any of them, we should immediately transfer essence yes. into the highest and allow the other one to then alchemize the slough and transmute back to source energy, right? Yep. So, not try to integrate or heal it because we're not getting that one, right? Exactly. And you know what I just heard? Okay. So I heard, as you're talking about that, it's a clunky process in a way, like it, 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 it can be, it can be very, um, this ascension, we're talking about ascension, the ascension journey and the, just so the audience understands and the reclaiming of our past lives, our soul fragments, all that. We're talking about it being a clunky process and, and it's like an integration period. And when they want us to slow down, we're meant to slow down because just as an aside, so the audience knows if we use this is I have a massive leg injury to the point where I cannot walk. I'm literally can't walk. I have this that I'm using and I can take one step at a time. And if I had to get out of this house fast, it wouldn't happen. I mean, so this all happened overnight and then it just got worse because I exasperated it, didn't understand it. You, on the other hand, have had this wild ride with your hair. You know what I'm getting? Um, you went through a timeline and they said nuclear fallout. Okay. So yeah. I think you either revisited a past life or you went through a timeline where you were kind of there in some way. Does that make sense to you? Yes. Um, You're not well, going to lose all your hair. I'm not getting that, but that's. Well, let me tell you, you, I don't know if you remember this about our sessions, but there was a time period where we were, I was again, you know, Carolyn, my body hurts. I don't know what's going on. It hurt, you know, I feel like it's just a swile. I had some very extreme experiences, if you, as you remember, oh, yeah. uh, 
the audience doesn't know this necessarily, but I, I had very extreme experience, and you mentored me through uh, uh, some ex ultra extreme situations. One of the times when we were discussing it, they were telling us that I somehow had contained a nuclear war. That's it. My being, my being, being my my being's kind of a huge being. So I feel some of the things that she's doing, we're doing as a larger being. And one of them was, if you remember, yeah. that I contained a nuclear yeah. war for the greater good. Remember so that? You're having to clear this. This is what's happening now. You're you're like oh, clearing this. Might be okay. okay. Is what I'm getting. It's it's a it was huge for you. Oh, I forgot about that. That is, that's it. That's what I'm yeah. getting. So they said something about it being containing. And that's how whenever we talk about nuclear, nuclear, they always said, no, we put a lid on that. They're talking about what we did. Yes. We, we, and, and basically when it went off, I think my being just wrapped itself around it and took the hit. Yes. 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 Okay. Exactly. Exactly. Your energy <laughs> body, your energy body is what I'm getting. Mm, wow. Yeah. Yeah, in fact, they're showing this, they're showing you like being this big light being around this. It, oh, they just, oh, I have so many chills. They just said encased, you encased it and you took the reverberation yourself. And I, I'm seeing it actually happening, the of the encasement. And it's just like you're shaking. Again, they're showing like the spaceship or the rocket that goes off. And then you finally you have to go through that hard part. You're shaking like this, right? And it's almost yeah. like you're going to burst apart, but you didn't. Oh, I just heard held it within you're clearing this you're and you went your dream or your nighttime escapade that you had when your hair got fused is there was a reason for you to go back. In yeah, I, th dream. I think the two things actually might be happening together because yeah. I do remember the, um, um, but I remember that that's what I was saying. I was saying, what's going on now? And I think even though I feel my energy body, as you know, because I was saying, oh my God, I'm in so much pain here. I don't know what's happening. But I think I'm also getting some of the reverberation into my, into this vessel. Now, my team has been talking about how, no, she had a, her, you know, get her blueprint body, like the divine blueprint body that we are all supposed to be bringing online here, right? Right. And that body is the one that can kind of handle this stuff a little bit better. So um, there's a lot going on. And, uh, you know, we've, we've got a lot going on now, like the sense sometimes it's a clunky process, but that's what I am focusing on right now with myself and as an offering to all, because that's usually what I do whenever I figure yeah. something out for myself. I always say, now offer this to everybody's yeah. self, right? That's exactly. So what I'm doing right now is I'm working on getting this a little bit better organized and aligned so we can handle this stuff flying at us as we clear, but we on this level can take it in and have the efficiency of the higher body that we're utilizing to take all this stuff in. Does that yes. make sense? Yes, completely. Absolutely. Yep. They're showing that, gosh, this is so interesting. We did not have this plan to talk about, and yet we're both talking about our bodies and the things that have recently happened and the severity, yeah. honestly, the severity of it, but they're yeah. very much showing that this body becomes, they're talking kind of energetically delicate yes. as we, I just said, make our moves to ascension and make our shifts and changes. This whole idea is that the body comes with us, right? So the body has to elevate as we know, right? It's not just about the soul, it's the body and the soul and the, the mind. It's the totality of who we are. No wonder these strange things happen to our bodies that we kind of tend to, like I did, dismiss. Although when I woke up that morning, I knew something was up. I was like, this doesn't happen. I've not done anything to myself. I literally was hobbled and now I'm worse and can't even walk. So this is it's a it's very it's much, oh, thing that's happening. We're, we're crossing, we're crossing around in like, sometimes I will be laying there and I will feel them like getting me out of a body. Like I can almost feel like kind of a jerk and being yes. pulled out almost. And I'm like, I'm asking my team, why, why is this so abrupt? And they said, you know, there were some instances where you were in stasis, you were asleep. Someone had put you in and locked it <laughs> and we're yes. like finding you and getting, and I'm like, what is happening? But it is this, it's like, all of the stuff that everything that could crazy stuff that could have happened yes. through yes. whatever. 
and that we're like going in and getting out this, getting this, you know, yes. we're waking up with all these weird injuries and our body feels weird, you know? So right now it's just kind of like, you don't know what you're going to get. No, when you go you to don't. Sleep at night right no. And you know what they said? So some advice for, for the audience, what there's, well, first of all, they're saying they're undoing the doings like a lot of undoings of the doings of these things, like the, the, we're reintegrating. It's a natural process, but it is difficult. So what I would say is what I'm hearing is we have to really be right now attuned to our bodies. And if we wake up like I did and I'm super active, right. And I was like, God, I can't walk. What's going on. We need to listen to this and we need to slow down and we need to take that time to be able to, oh, they just said, nurture ourselves in the body and not keep pushing so hard, which is part of my problem. That's my individual issue is I push my body so hard often, but yes. so this is an integration that's happening and it's very much affecting the body. We know we have the mind and the emotions and all of that too, but mm-hmm. uh-huh. this is huge. And it feels like it's accelerated right now. And I don't mean just for me, but it feels like an acceleration of the body's shift and change. And I think the closer you get to these different stages of, okay, they just said awareness. Okay. They just said consciousness raising, which ultimately is ascension. Um, the more that you're going to, that we're going to have some of these things happen to us. It feels like we just have to be aware. We're all at different stages, right? But we have the body shifting and changing so that we can take it ultimately with us. It's really wild to know that that is, because I feel like like you, what you just said made me think of something, nurture yourself in the body. So remove yourself from thinking that you are the body and remember you're nurturing your soul. Yes. Fragments in the body, like you're the incubator, right? Like you're the it's, 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 you're not, you're not your body or your soul, right? But we're nurturing, we're healing our soul pieces in the body and it's, it's coming out in how we feel, right? I think that I just had that kind of like flip in my, that little uh, change of, of um, concept there to flip when you said that. You know what they just showed me as you're talking about that? They're showing the soul encased in the body, right? And so the soul, think about this. So, oh God, it's the same thing. It's the containment. It's they're going back to the containment. The body's the containment of all the stuff happening that the soul's bringing back in. And it's doing exactly what you just said was like, it's very similar to the um, containing of the nuclear uh, explosion or whatever that you did, right? In that, in that journey that we saw, but they're showing it as a similar metaphor in that the soul brings back all its parts, but the body is doing this thing of to hold, trying to hold it together and adjust. Does that make sense to you? Yes, yes, absolutely. <sighs> well, you know, it's really hard too, especially you know, we're so focused here on the health of our body and how will we see that when the body doesn't feel good, you think I'm not healthy, something's wrong, right? Yes. And I, I am so bad at that. I, I just, it just hit me that when you're saying this, that you, I think they're trying to get us to see it the other way around that you are, you might be feeling the repercussions of a um, fractured or um, traumatized soul. Yes. And your body is healing it, but you're feeling it, but your body is actually not sick. Your body is, they're utilizing to heal the soul piece. Is totally, that, totally. No, that's <laughs> exactly it. And the body is adjusting to, to be able to accommodate those energies as well. And so it's a back and forth. That's exactly it. But we don't understand that to your point. And yeah. what I'm getting is people who are a little more chill or less active. This is actually kind of great because- yeah they're going to pick up on some of these things and they're just going to chill out the anybody in the audience who's super physical and yeah. pushes their body works out all the time, da, 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 that whole thing uh-huh. going to be much more um, uh, profound because we have to take the time to do the resting is what yeah. I'm getting and to do the integration. Whoa. Yeah. I, you know, this is funny because I'm sitting here thinking, okay, I can, I can chill and rest. There is like, I don't like to be uncomfortable. So I'm constantly trying to do energetic stuff for myself, but um, that's so true. This is I'm still going to work on that though, for the collective. I'm sorry. I just can't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> they I love, me what, I love what you said though. I'm like, we need to, we need to find a way to do this, you know, a little bit, a little bit. Oh, totally. Totally. Right? 
Because don't you think if we have, you know, the full, like some of the really full light bodies are really like uh, some of the plasmic stuff I've seen is amazing. It will, it kind of helps with this process really well, you know, I don't know, but anyway, so well, no, no, let me, let me tell you what I'm seeing when you said that. So when you said the word plasma, they immediately showed. And of course, I wish I could show like a, a Marvel movie when they show this, but they're showing this blending, like this morphing of the yeah. plasma into the body. And it makes it to make it smoother, the adjustment, yeah. the change. They said the energies actually flow differently if we yes. were able to do that. And well, I wonder, we can invite the plasma in, I think, yeah. at any time, because I think no matter how far gone or how badly we jacked up one of the, one of the versions, plasma can integrate into anything. So yeah. I think that plasma, if, if, you know, they can correct me if I'm wrong, I think that if we invite in like a plasma light body, it will help like with injuries the healing of injuries, the connectedness of ourselves to our life force energy, everything, um, our, um, you know, everything will be more efficient, I believe, but maybe we just have to invite it in and say, yes, I want that. Um, and I'm saying yes to that right now. Holy moly for uh -huh. all versions. Okay. Um, so what I'm getting is oof. visual of like a Buddha kind of sit, just like a Buddha, mm -hmm. uh, visual sitting and well, it, it'd be like you could do it in meditation or sitting, but I'm getting the, I don't know how you'd want to do this, but it's, they're bringing it. It's like bringing in a full, um, looks like a, a energy blanket or an energy, um, bringing it in throughout the full body to not only encase, but to infiltrate, they're talking about like infiltrate into the cells and to, oh, yeah, and, and they keep using the word fusion to fuse in with. They've been using the word fusion since we started talking. Okay, so it's like a yes layered process. I'm having a real struggle explaining the visual. I can I'm, I can see it. Okay, so it's kind of like a uh, like an infusion mask, right? It is. On you, where you wrap it and it sucks through your skin into yeah. your body. The That's same. a good example. Yeah, you can, you can do body wraps where it does this thing. Um, but, and you know, plasma is programmable too. So I'm like, you know, oh, that's right. where no matter where we are and what crazy frequency you do, you do the plasma body, you wrap that, you do the plasma body and you make sure that everything like the blueprint body and the, you know, all of the things that you want to be available to you as your tool belt. Yep. In any situation, no matter where you find yourself in any past life interface, anything, you know, you want the highest, I, I always say, I want the highest uh, source blueprint body that is right. available at all times, being the dominant frequency of my being to help me manage no matter what comes at me. And so even with this, you know, you do plasma, plasma in there will be able to infuse into your cells very easy, but it's also yeah. programmable. So I'm saying, okay, we'll make sure that that's got the full mm, program. Yeah. Uh, horse body coming in too they're spread they're telling me i need to calm down and they're probably saying meditate it'll make it easier for it to flow in because i'm all <gasps> okay and so so see we're going to each have our own thing with that right so my thing with that is i make an assumption if i take care of my body in the human way everything's fine i don't have to deal because typically that's kind of been my thing not yeah. lately not the last yeah. couple of years i've had some significant two major injuries and, but it's so interesting to realize how we need to be incredibly mindful, like of the parts we haven't been mindful, like my body, I take care of it. I exercise to do all that, but I also don't think of it as having to adjust to things. I do know my emotions and my mind and my, everything's adjusting, but the body, we got to mind, body, soul, know that all of it's adjusting and find ways to be able to integrate what's coming into us and use that plasma visualization is what I'm getting and then program it. So yes, I know that I mean, so you're, you're giving it an intention. Like you're saying, this is what I want. You're also saying that my body can and will and does heal quickly and efficiently, easily, right? You're yeah. telling your, I, I, my body does this. So it's almost like giving it permission to do it. Right. 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 So you're, I'm giving you permission to be your highest potential. Yes. My body does this. Right. So I, I, you're absolutely right. It's like, it's not just, you know, there, there is, 
there is a lot that goes into the outside care and maintenance nutrition of our body, but there is also energetics with your mind, body, soul complex, your intention, your creator being where you bring in the energies and the frequencies of these things, right? Exactly. So I think you're absolutely right. You can do it on, on multiple levels. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's what I'm working on. And again, like I say, whenever I do this stuff, I always say now offer that to everybody's hire. Yes. And yes. as of yet, I have never had anybody say no. Right. Well, and so, the higher everybody's hire is going to decide for themselves. So what we can do is yeah. we offer out, we can all do this, by the way, we yes. can do in our, um, meditations in our own healing work for ourselves to your point, And I'm glad you brought this up, offer out to the collective, to those higher yes. selves, and then they, that those higher selves will make the decisions as to what's right for that person, right. in their journey at that time, because it could be too much for them at that moment, but they, mm-hmm. it could be something they would be able to utilize down the road, but it's an offering is what I'm hearing. It's an yes. offering. Mm-hmm. I always make sure, like I asked my team, I'll make sure that everybody's higher self is aware yeah. and offer to them. Right. Yeah. So I just, exactly. I, I just do that as an automatic now. And, and, um, and so what I'm getting here is that's. Okay, this is where we can be really powerful as a light worker. So many of us are wrapped up in, oh, I want my family to awaken. I want my, you know, and I need to talk to them about this. Mm-mm. It, you know, we talk about that all the time. Like, no, nope, you can't talk your way, through, talk people into the right. awakening or help them understand even what you're right. going through when they're not going through it. What we can do though, is what we're talking about here is we go into our meditative mindfulness breath work mode and the intention that we have maybe say for ourselves in the healing mm-hmm. We can then yeah. offer that out to the collective. Yeah. It's powerful. You know, what you just said is so funny and interesting too, because this is so true. What you're doing when you're when you are trying to convince somebody who is still asleep, you're speaking to the part of them that is going to be gone when they wake up. Yeah, that's a good. So you're that's trying a very good to analogy. convince something that's not going to be there anymore, right? right? So you're talking to their ego, basically. Totally. You're not talking to their So when you, this is something like I told you about, like when I've gone through healings and things, I've always directed my communication to maybe the person that I need, like my ex-husband, for instance, Mm -hmm. um, I directed it to his higher self. Mm -hmm. And I went through my healing and clearing with him, with his higher self, because I knew I couldn't call him on the phone and have this conversation because he's not awake. Right. Exactly. Exactly. that's what we can, we can still do that. We're still in communication. They're right there. It's not like they're ever not present. They hear and know everything that you're doing anyway, but you can direct it towards and have just as much, if not more of an impact. And that energy will eventually make its way into the body and they might feel changes in them. And they might not be consciously aware here of how that happened, right. but it still will happen. Yep. So you can move forward with these kinds of things knowing that you're speaking to the part of them that will be embodied when they wake up and maybe don't waste your time or frustration speaking to the one that's not going to be there (laughs) anymore. Right. Yes. Because as humans, we have a tendency to think if we just open our mouths and start talking about these things, people will understand, but they just look at us with glazed over eyes. And so they're not even operating within the frequency where they can understand what you're saying. No. Right. Exactly. a lot of times it's, it's uh, counterproductive yes. to have spiritual conversations with those who are not at the level, but you can very easily have that conversation telepathically with their higher self. Absolutely. They're right there. They're right there with them all the time. Yeah. And so. another thing to remember for those of us watching is we don't have to hear a response back. We don't have to hear anything from them no. at all. No, nothing to have to connect with the higher self in the, other than an intention. But a lot of people get wrapped up in, well, I don't hear anything. I don't get any response. I don't, you don't have to do that. It's all energetic. So it's your intention that you're offering to that individual's higher self. And then you just go through your process of whatever your process is. And you can use anything because your process is your process. You're the creator. There's not a recipe for that other than having that intention to do something beautiful, offer something beautiful for someone that will assist them in their journey. Exactly right. That's been some of the most powerful things. This is something that I did in the very beginning of kind of just getting my feet wet in the whole awakening. I decided to do that and I've used it ever since, but it was incredibly powerful and I made it up on the fly. And that's some of the best things I've ever done. I didn't have the rule book or the protocol or the, this or the training or a certification in any kind of, I just did it. 
and it worked beautifully. Yes, and I think yeah. that is the point. You do what works yeah. for you. If it comes from your heart, your mind, your, um, it, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Your, I lost it. Uh, your being your uh, intuition. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your well, and, and you, you know, what you're doing is you're, this is great because it's a validation of the things that have come through for me for other people in that we have everything inside of us. Whatever our intention is, we, it can be, it doesn't have to be a recipe. They always say, don't make it a recipe that someone else makes because it's for you. Like when we go to learn something and a great example, of this is going to learn and take Reiki as an example, you know, that steps us into understanding and how energy works and energy healing. But the thing is you can go to Reiki and come out and go, Oh, okay. I got a few things out of that. I'm going to do my own process that I have, or I'm going to create my own. It's just the use of energy. What you're doing is you're just manipulating right. energy. The point is, is you can learn from somebody, but you always want to make it your own because to your point, everything's inside of you. Just, you can make up anything you want and it can be. Yes. And it's smart. It's more, um, it's wiser actually to do it on your own because you can totally. your intuition. You're going to draw from yeah. your specific background, all the stuff that you have, if you follow somebody else's recipe, like you said, yes. you're not tapping in and using your own. You no. want to tap and use your own intuition. I think this will be a good idea. Do it because yes. that's start wicking more and more of your inertia, kind of of your Akash to your body, to exactly. you, to use your bring, you're pulling you in. Right. Yes. Yes. And, um, you know, I always tell my team, nobody does me better than me. You know, I don't want that Exactly. I don't want that, you know, for somebody interfering or trying to do whatever, whatever. I want to use mine, bring mine. And I want to, I want to see, feel and hear me. Right. Very so, organic, very organic. And very, it, it, mm-hmm. I, honestly, what I've noticed in this journey is everything has come back. This is such a great conversation. Everything has come back to just me in the things that I do. I don't have a lot of, and, and I'm not dissing any of this, you know, like, um, um, accoutrements that I use a lot of, I just do, I just use me and what's inside of me. I don't use a lot of, um, I don't know, incantation, incantations, um, any kind of um, special words or sayings, any kind of, um, and I'm not, again, I'm not saying you can't, but I'm just saying, eventually you find yourself way, your, yourself back, yes. your way back to your organic self and everything right. sprouts from there. Everything right. grows from there because it's already there. Crystals are fantastic. I love them, but you don't have to have them. You don't have to have any of that. You can invoke them. Yes. But all those accoutrements are wonderful little um, uh, tools to use. But what's in here is is the foundation of using all the rest of that. Yes, it's that's absolutely right. You're utilizing things outside of yourself as we all do up into a point to remember how to utilize it inside. Yes. So externally not just crystals and the things that go on with um awakening kind of stuff everything you've ever done in your entire life outside of you is helping remember what's inside of you yes it's exactly. helping you to remember so yes yeah, sure I, I think that that's i mean i've got crystals all over the place i've got yeah, pendulums too. i've got all me the stuff and once in a while i'll pick them up and use them but after a while mm-hmm. you start to realize it's all about what you're doing with your energy and, you know, how you're working your own energy, Absolutely. how you're pulling off the things, you know, Absolutely, you know, I agree with you so much. It's so true. It's so interesting. We came upon that as the part of the conversation. So just thinking about this yesterday, yesterday. Exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So what do you want to talk about? What else? Ooh. What do you got? I, I have a lot of energy when I started talking about that plasma. Ooh, I've got oh, I've like this. That's fascinating. Oh, it is rumbling. programmable though. That's so, I'm very much getting this. They're showing codes. They're, they're showing like a, they're showing like a click crystalline blue, like overlay blending. And there's, they're showing coding within it. Like to your point, you program it with your intention, essentially. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You're bringing in, you know, I'm always saying, bring in my highest light, you know, the body, some of the bodies that I felt that are unbelievable. Yeah. And then I'm in another one. I'm like, oh my God, you know, I tell my team sometimes I'm like, this feels so good. We need to name it so that I can say, I want that. And you know exactly what I'm talking about because I love this, right? So I'll say this, let's right. name this and whatever. And then sometimes when I feel terrible, I'm like, oh, let's get, you know, yeah. um, that body or whatever. And then, and then so we could feel it again. So I'm like, I want to remember this feels so amazing. I love this body, yeah. you know, different bodies we experience. I don't know if everybody 
I'm super sensitive, so I feel these things. But I don't know if everybody's having that experience. Yeah, I, kinda, yeah, I was going to bring that. Yeah, my being is kind of crazy. She's all over the place doing all kinds of stuff, trying in this, that, and the other. So I have probably got to feel a wider diversity that I remember here, even though your being's probably doing the same thing. I remember doing it in this in this uh, um, plane, right? Yeah. So Jennifer's, rem- I remember it. So um, I'm saying, let's uh, make these things. Sorry, what? No, no, no. Go ahead. Go ahead. Finish. No, no, I'm. I'm no, I was I'm just repeating myself. Go ahead. No, what I was going to say is because you're a physical empath, and that's a difference. <laughs> I'm, I'm not. I, I have, I have some clairsentience in me, but I do not have. It's just not my what I do. I don't notice my bodily shifts and changes unless it's um like you literally become yeah. it essentially. Yeah. Right. And I don't think everybody, well, everybody's not like that because I'm not like that, right? Mm-hmm. Even though yeah. I have more sentient abilities to a, you know, to a degree, it has nothing to do with the kinds of things you experience where you actually feel your, all your different bodies or you, yes. can, and you, yeah. have, and you've gone through that physical, um, the severity, like they just said of, mm-hmm. and, and okay. So that's interesting. So, because, so what they're showing me, and I guess this is part of what we've talked about with you is you do a lot of this work for the collective too, though. You're like a representation of that with what you've gone through in a lot of ways as we've talked, Mm -hmm. but they're also saying that individually, and it's because you're a physical empath, you feel it so much more and it, it, it happens with other individuals. It's just not, it's not recognized. They're kind of showing it like a more and this is just a metaphor, but a, like a dense body or more density going through it. Whereas you're just like, it just flows in and you feel it. Does that resonate? Yes, very much so. That's right. I feel the difference. Um, I, it's been beautiful in some ways. Like I say, I felt these amazing bodies, but you know, it has, it's, it has, it's both sides. Um, like I've also felt what is like a cyborg body. Like I felt I came through that and I felt the whole thing come on the side of my face with the thing and the lines and they're plugged in. And I'm like, Oh my, so I feel it. I don't stay there long. I'm like, get this out of here. I don't like it, but I still have the experience where I can feel these really every kind that you can imagine. Right. So here's a good example. Here's a good example. I think of the difference with us. Do you remember? I don't know if I ever showed you this. I should put a clip of this in the video. Did I, did I know you when I had the, the collar rash that was like this, it looked like, it looked like somebody drew it on me. It was from the Orion Wars. I figured it out with someone else. And it was, I know some it, other people that have had that too. Yes. Raised oh red. It was massive. I'll try to put a clip in if I can find it. And it didn't itch, thank God, but it was raised and it was on the back of my neck. It was an Orion war. I had been collared. So here's the thing. The difference with you and me is I, I get like rashes, physical stuff happening, shoulders dislocating, hips dislocating, that kind of thing. Blah, blah, blah. Rash, like I said, this rash. Whereas if you had the Ryan wore rash thing. I think what would happen is you would feel the trauma of the life of the whole body too. Does that make sense to you? Like yes. it wouldn't just be the rash show up. You feel into the body of that being I was at the time. Does that resonate? Like I would be if I, as, I, as if I was her at the time. Yes, exactly. I don't. I don't think I necessarily just feel one too. I can. I feel like the collective. So sometimes I will feel that. Mm-hmm. Um, at an extreme level happening to multiples at the same time, but they're all running through one. So I can, I can almost tell you, I can feel six or I can feel 10 mm-hmm. or sometimes when we were talking about that war, I don't know what war they were telling us about. They said that I was, I, you know, not only the nuclear thing, but at one time I was um, providing the landscape for a war. Uh, do you remember that? Cause I told you, I said, Carolyn, I feel like there's hundreds of me out there. Yeah. Yeah. yeah doing so so I can feel like huge groups of people even all at the same time and I can tell you about how many are doing it but I feel all of them at the same time so yes and I've had this feeling with that one too having certain things on my especially like the wrists around my arms and around my neck also there's also one that goes around your waist so I've had that experience we didn't stay there long because I was not I was thrilled about that one but um but yes, I know exactly what you're talking about. I will feel the body 
as if real time happening right now, right? So I even feel things like people touching me. Um, you know, I can feel it as if I'm there in the moment of it. Yes. Whereas um, what will happen with me, I get the rash. I get the rash. I wouldn't yeah. get what you get the full on effect. I would be going, what the heck is this? And I you have to figure it out. I wouldn't feel the inner part of that, of feeling the, the full experience, I guess is what I would say. Yeah. Whereas you typically would because of your level of sensitivity. Yeah. It's, yeah. <laughs> it's crazy business as you know, but um, yeah, it's, this has been a very interesting journey. I know all of us are having very different things happen. Yes. Um, sometimes it can be very extreme. There's been there. And sometimes it can be just enough mm-hmm. for you to kick into creator mode mm-hmm. and start doing some energetic um, builds maybe that you want to share with the collective focusing into your body, getting into yourself, pulling from your Akash, your mastery. Yes. You are your own master shaman. Sometimes I get into situations, I'll say, you know, bring in my master shaman, bring in my heal, master healer, bring in the, they're all aspects of me. I need help right now. Exactly. And, and getting and trying to work through this. I, I work through it and then I offer it to the collective. And these are the times where some of this energetic like crappy feelings might just be enough of a trigger to say go sit down and meditate totally right? totally and that might be your cue to do it you know i think it is i th- i think it very much is because i know for myself for an example mm-hmm. i need to go sit down i mean i meditate but i need to sit down and i need to move into some into my leg like go for straight from my hip into my leg and spend time doing it i do this with my clients, for God's sakes, why wouldn't I do it for myself? Right. And so it it definitely is. It's not just walking down the street going, heal me, (laughs) heal me. We need to sit with intention and we need to feel into what it is we want to shift and change. And I keep seeing, bring it, they're showing it like a blanket, bring in the plasma layer, bring it in, act like you're, you know, you can even envision sitting at a computer programming it, you know, programming your plasma, you know, envision, really imagine doing this. And for example, me, what what I could do is sit down and envision, okay, I'm going to code now that my leg and then envision my leg being changed and shifted. And maybe I want to look, you know, how do, what does it look like now that it's it's like epigenetics? Have you you understood? Oh yeah. Yes, absolutely. That's amazing. And amazing healing uh, properties there. You can, yes, yes. but you can go in and even talk to it. You can like, I've even spoken directly to a part of my body that's hurting dad, talk to it and ask it what's going on with you. What do we need? And you know, like it's a, because it is, it's its own, its own consciousness, really. Right. So. Exactly. And I, you know, what they're saying to me is, see, this is good learning for me too, because I tend to just, you know, say, eh, I'll be fine. You know, I'll go, oh, I don't spend the time, but the point is they're saying, spend the time to do, to do the imagination of that. Like the example I just gave for me, I think I'm going to use it like sitting it out of the computer program, knowing the plasma is coming in and then I'm going to envision a body like a blueprint body of me in front of me. And I'm actually going to go in and I'm going to do surgery. Oh, I just heard etheric surgery. Okay. Mm -hmm. And utilize the plasma and code it so that it code C O D E code it so that it then infiltrates into my, my leg and actually heals me. I am going to report back on this. (laughs) Let me tell you too, this is amazing because and I healed my, my lower back. I heard I had to, um, I messed up my back in a rollerblading accident when I was younger. When I started doing energy work, I started utilizing this and I healed my back. And yep. degenerative disc disease that's supposed to be irreversible. Yep. I reversed mine completely. So yep. but what the, what I was going to say in, in, in doing that, I learned something very in, interesting about the body. The body language of your cells and your organism, it loves frequency, color, mm-hmm. light, Mm-hmm. and visuals more so than you talk it to death yes it'll figure out what you mean if you use words but what's even better is if you want to like for instance i i went and i got a big book of anatomy oh, and i looked idea. up what a healthy spine looks like or i looked up what a healthy whatever looks like right when i wanted to correct my eyesight i looked at an eye what a healthy eye looks like and I utilized it in my visualizations and my, like my husband's knee, I was telling you about, yes. he blew his knee out really yes. badly. 
So I've looked at these things just to give my mind a snapshot. So my body knows what I'm talking about, right? Yeah. I'm giving it visuals because it likes the language of visuals so much more yes. than language. Yep. And that's why imagination, one of the first signs that I got in my awakening was imagination. Like imagination will create, it helps you create. And that aligns directly with I've healed my own knees twice. Right. And yes. it's, 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 but it's, this is a big injury now, right? This yeah. I have a huge injury. And so now it is, it's about knowing that it, it doesn't have to, I mean, that we have the power to shift anything with in us. And to your point, bringing in that light, bringing in that energy, bringing in that love to that area. Um, What you're saying about being inside the knee. Exactly. And so what I have found is you can just go into meditation and visualize yourself moving in. And I'm not kidding. You're going to know visualize. I don't know. Let's just say I always go into the sacral region first. When I go into someone's etheric body, visual of their body. And then I usually go up the spine, but let's just say you just wanted to work on say my right leg as an example, you can go in through the sacral and then you just basically, I I visualize a hand going in through my leg and feeling like where you hurt, you feel through that tendon or ligament, you will know, believe me. And it's all in your, it's all in your, your mind. It's not, and you're going through your leg and then you're going to find the part, like, for example, with me, I'm going to find the part in my knee. That's the problem. And that's where you then start flowing the energy flowing the plasma with the intention of healing that area. Yes. Mm -hmm. Because what do they say about the mind, the body? It doesn't, it doesn't discriminate between what we see and fantasy. No. If you imagine something, if you fantasize, your body will respond the same way. They've done all kinds of studies on this. We right? just gotta believe it. We just gotta believe. Yeah. You just your body doesn't know the difference when you imagine or uh, think that it's. Uh, you know, God, what are some of the things that they use? It's wild. It even changes like the body chemistry. Yes. It makes your, your body responds as though it was real, right? Yes. Oops. Sorry. My okay. phone keeps doing this crazy. Um, as if it was it really happened. Your body does not know the difference between fantasy and reality because oh. to your body, everything is fantasy. <laughs> You know, we're the only ones saying, no, this is the real, the real one. Right. And the other ones aren't right? right. This is not real, but this is real. Your body doesn't know the difference because basically when it comes at the end of the day, it's all fantasy, right? right. So um, it will respond this way uh, to, to your mind, to your visualization as though a hand is really in there yes. doing Completely. exactly what you're imagining it's doing. Right. Completely. Exactly. And that is literally how I healed the last part of my left leg injury. When finally, Mm -hmm. after nine months, I'm sitting in the bathtub going, you know, I'd had PT, I'd had everything under the sun. And I had like 10 or 15% that I was just not, you know, just that last part made all that difference for me. The bathtub one night, I mean, seriously, this is what I do all day long for others. Right. And I was like, oh, and then I hear, why don't you try to heal yourself? You're in an Epsom salt bath. Let's go. And I'm like, okay, so I did, I did the inside the knee thing. I kid you not went to bed the next day, woke up. I have never had a problem with my left leg since it literally went away overnight. It's it's amazing, you know, and you're right. It's like, why don't we do this more? I got into all of this because of my son, right? My son is going to need all, and I ended up going into energy healing for him. I learned so much about it now. I did. I do it all for myself. I do it for yes. my family, for everybody now, right? Yes. But it is. It works so well oh for yourself and others. And you know, when you're working with others too, you are working with their higher self. Yes. And like I said, I've rarely had anybody, if ever, I don't even know about anybody ever saying no, right? Yeah. With what you go in with the right intention and the right energy, there, you, you can really help other people. You know, okay. so. Okay, I'm just going to tell you something a little sure. weird here, which I think is fascinating. We're having this conversation. Mm-hmm. Uh, given what I did to myself this morning with this leg, and mm-hmm. it's like severe to the point, I cannot take a step. I can't take a step. I'm in a brace and I have my hiking pole, like I showed earlier. I, I'm going to go out on a limb. Since we're talking about this, uh-huh. I'm actually moving. I took my brace off. I had my break, my leg started to sweat dramatically. Okay. Like while I w- we were talking 
And I thought, I got to take this brace off because I was uncomfortable. Okay. I wish you could see this. I wish I could point the camera down. I can, I can actually, I think we're healing my leg as we're talking. I know we are. Okay. Because, oh God, I have so many chills. So yes, I think that this is, but this is the very thing I'm talking about. It's you doing you with your own body. And I love doing that because you only have to do it a few times with somebody who's engaged with you and they'll learn how to do it for themselves. And that's always my ultimate goal is to teach somebody how to do it for themselves because that's the point. Totally. Right. Exactly. Exactly. And I love the visual. Of course, you can make up your own, but there's something powerful about visualizing going inside of your body. Basically, the and you don't have to do this, but what I do is whenever I start an energy healing, for whatever reason, I've been guided to go through the sacral, do what you want, right? But this is just me. And my hand actually goes in. I literally go in etherically to the the um, to the the sacral area. I always work the spine first because they always talk about the highway. It's the highway of open up that energetic area. But then you can just move your hands, and you'll literally feel like you're. If you imagine, you will mm-hmm. literally feel like you're in ligaments and and cartilage, and you're in you're you're gonna feel when you go inside the middle of your body, you're gonna feel the liver. You can go to the liver, and that's why to Jennifer's point, to your point. Go look at a human body because that will give you frame of reference. It's awesome. And you can clear out what I used to do a lot of is clearing out livers and like doing, I would go actually into the liver. And then what I would do, and this is my process, I would say, take, use my hand as the sponge that would clear out. Oh, good idea. Toxicity. And then what I would do is I would then offer it into the violet flame and for transmutation. But the thing is, being inside that body is super powerful. So what I would say to everyone is go fiddle with this practice. You can't do anything wrong, have good intention and off you go working on your own body and continue to, to become your own healer. Yes. Cause that's absolutely. where we're headed. That's where we're headed. We used to be able to do this all the time. We're just reclaiming it. Every single one of us, every single yep. one. Of us. This is something that we should be able to do for ourselves every moment of every day. This cool. is how we designed we were not designed to get sick we were not designed to need a healer we are our own healer um so yes i think this is just activating our own it's coming back in the remembrance of it showing you remembering how to do it you know it's really cool too when you're you know, what you were saying the visualization made me remember this i through visuals showed my body what i was trying to talk to so i okay now i'm talking to my lumbar spine and yep. i would see and i would go now you want to talk about amazing your body is so amazing your pineal is is basically if you've ever seen a pineal gland it is a, it literally is a third eye it's made exactly like this eye when they go in and like if in an autopsy you take out it is made it has the same internal workings and everything as your eye here it is in, in the center so not only do you have that but every cell of your body is capable of seeing and sending the visual to this third eye that you have. So as I went in, I visualized the perfect spine and I visualized where I was and I put my energy where I wanted. I started then receiving visuals from the inside of my own body yes, yes, from my too. own cells to my pineal showing me what my spine looks like, yeah. right? Exactly. Why? Exactly. So you're really, you get in communication with your body on a visual level. It will talk back and it'll it's send well right to you it'll start to turn on all kinds of stuff you've got that you may not even realize you've got right yes and one thing i have this which ties to what you're talking about one way we can start that relationship with the body because a lot of us don't have great relationships with the body we just have the body and we just keep going about our day we hope it actually, works right right you know right right yeah. is have that conversation in the mirror in the morning talk mm-hmm. to the body look at your body and I know we're all just terrible conversations with our body lots of times, especially women. And I suppose men are just sometimes just as bad. But the thing is, change that story around and start having that conversation consciously with your body. Because to our point, the body has its own consciousness. It will talk back to you. Tell your body you love it. Tell your body you're going to work with. Ask the body what it needs. It will respond to you in some way. You're going to get a feeling. You might get words. You know, if you don't get words and to get channeled information, you may get like, you do, Jennifer, the, yeah. your your physical feeling of all of it. But yes. talk, start by talking to the body and form a relationship with it. And then start going into your own 
healing. Pick a thing. Pick a small yeah. thing you want to start to work on. That's yeah. bugging you. You can pick on. on you can even pick on eye, like eyesight. I wanted to improve my eyesight. You know, I said I want my my vision, my eyes to be right. uh, twenty. You know, twenty twenty or or whatever the most ideal vision is. I want to stop wearing contact lenses and glasses. You can it just really, small that if you want. To. Yep. Uh, uh, what I have found. This is me for. Mm-hmm. Ones that are, I'll just say, I don't want to say easier, but maybe good starting places for people that haven't done this before are, are like wrist issues, joint mm. issues. I, at least that's where I have a lot of success headaches. Okay. Yes. So lots of times when we get really stiff head or necks, just, it's a lot of voice chakra stuff. Cause you know, we haven't voiced ourselves. We haven't spoken up. We're holding a lot in whatever point is, is Working this area here can release so much, and then you'll feel the release in your head too. If you have migraines regularly, start working the back of the neck area and take your hand up through your neck. And what you're going to find lots of times is it's a okay, they're, they're talking about this. I've kind of done enough of these like a, a compression area, and you'll start working nerves. It'll they'll take you, you'll be taken as you visualize into the near the nerve areas where you can start like smoothing them out. This is what I do. I end up smoothing them out and offering them energy. You'll be guided in your visualization. It'll start coming to you as if you're like a little person. They show me this. Sometimes they say like this movie, this old movie that's called inner space. So Dennis Quaid. And I think, well, I don't know, maybe Ryan, maybe where they shrunk him down so small, they could inject him in through a it, syringe into this pod. And he was going around somebody's body, like Martin Short or something, some old crazy movie. But they were trying to tell me that that is basically how you can navigate to your larger being as a small, as a cell. You can like go around and look if you want to, because mm-hmm. you tied in your, every cell of your body is in communication with each other. And it can, it can show you through your pineal Yep. what it sees. It's, it's incredible, really. Okay. There's your video today. I don't have a lot more to add to that. I think that was pretty all inclusive and will lead us up into the potential of um, talking about this further and also doing some healing work in a potential live down the road here. Additionally, I will be coming out with the, if you can believe it already, the April energy update sometime at the end of next week. But So that'll be coming up. We'll really kind of see what is going to start showing up out of the spring. It's really rung true with what's been brought through um, for this year already. And now we're launching off into April. So it just seems impossible to think that we're in April already. But yeah, another energy update's coming your way. We'll see what uh, the light keepers have to offer. And again, I just want to thank you so much for joining me. Check out my services, purplerainhealing.com. If you'd like your own channeled messages and or distance energy healing, I offer all kinds of services where you get really robust conversations with me, where I bring through channeled information from your spirit team to help you on your journey forward. I also offer distance energy healing and channeled information as well. So everything I do offers one-on-one channeled information to help you on your journey forward. I would love to work with you. So check out purplerainhealing.com for all of my services. And again, thank you so much for joining me in this video and I will see you in the next one.